Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Community Voices. It is July, a whole new month. I hope everybody's doing well and in good spirits. To kick things off for the first CV of July, very excited to be joined by one of the most elite NFL cornerbacks today, Denzel Ward from the Cleveland Browns. How are you doing, man? I'm good, man. I'm blessed. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. I can't complain. I can't complain. I appreciate you cutting out time to do this. I know, I know it's summertime. But that's still training season and things are ramping up. So I appreciate you cutting out time to do this for us. Uh, no problem. Now, I want I want to get things started off by kind of just going back to the roots a little bit of it, because I think one thing about you is that you're an, you're athletic. Like you're just like you're just an athlete, true and true at the core. And, you know, I, growing up, I believe you were into three sports thing was basketball, football and track. And you decided at a certain point to go with football and really solidify all your skills and strengthen your skills in that lane. What what is it about the athleticism that kind of like seeps into your game today from like back then? And like what what kind of pushes you? What kind of pushed you to do the NFL? And how's that athleticism still kind of seep into what you do today at the game? Yeah. So just being in three sports, um, it was just so a way my parents would put me in all the sports just to see what I would enjoy at a young age. And I mean, I enjoy all of those. I enjoy playing basketball. I enjoy running track and playing football, but, um, and all, and all those have different movements and, and skill sets and stuff like that. that I feel helped me for my football game now, but I feel once I started to focus on football, I just had more of a passion and I just enjoy football more. I just felt like I could be myself out there on the field and uh, I just enjoy it just uh, being around my teammates and just uh, just having fun out there on the field. I feel like I could express myself a lot more out there. So that's really what allowed me to lock in and uh, focus on football. And I just put all my energy and efforts towards that. I love that. And I can, and you can mean like the, the work is the product, right? Like I mean, you've been putting in work, continues to grow. You're elite at it. So I can definitely see how you not only just made the right choice, but the athleticism still just kind of gives you that upper advantage. And you're actually going into your seventh season this year, if, I, if, I stand correct, if I'm correct. Um, there's a lot to learn within them seven years, I'm sure. There's going to be a lot to learn probably within the next seven going forward. Um, but I would love to just kind of know what's one of the most impactful things that being in this game of football today, especially in the NFL, that has kind of taught you about yourself. And this could be something you learned about yourself on the field or something that you learned about yourself off the field, just through the game. But what have you? What's like one of the most impactful lessons that you've learned through these seven years so far? Um, I would probably say just the platform that I have, just being in the NFL and and just being able to affect and impact a lot of people that I come in contact with, whether uh, that's people watching me on the football field or off the football field. Um, I feel that uh, my family and I, uh, we've been able to do a good job with creating foundation and just. Uh, using that platform that I've been blessed with to just affect a lot of people. I love that. I love that. And I want to mention, you know, earlier I started off, I started off this conversation and I've said it before, elite, right? Like being a great, like you're one, like one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL today. Now, the thing about being elite too is like a level of greatness that people con consistently hold you to. It can be stressful. It can be inspiring. It can be a challenge a lot, a lot of people like to take on. Sometimes for some people, it can be too much. But I was thinking before this interview, there's a, there a quote I remember hearing, and it was saying that people aren't afraid to be great. They're afraid to have to do it again, which I think was like super impactful, right? So, you know, for you, with that elite title, you know, in 2022, you had one of the biggest deals of all, like highest paid TVs of all time. There is a lot of blessings within that, but there's also a lot of challenges. The, the spotlight's on you. People are expecting you to not just be great, but be even better and holding you accountable for things even outside of your ability. They just want you to see you be this like God player. What is it like to kind of, how do you balance that, right? How do you balance that, like that increased challenge and knowing you have to be great, all those responsibilities while still being able to lock in and be like, yo, I'm just, I have to be the best me that I can be and block out the noise and lock in. Like, what is that like? Yeah, I, I think it's really all just perspective. Um, like, yeah, it's a lot of pressure. It could be, if you look at it on one side of it, a lot of pressures from getting the contract and everything and a lot of noise from the outside and people saying, oh, he has to do this, he has to do that. But I feel I place a lot of pressure on myself and I kind of exceed those expectations that people may even place on myself 
uh, with, I, I mean, I want to be the best and I want to go out there and show that every year and game in and game out. And so, I mean, I train, I feel I train hard enough to where I could go out and showcase that and I could stay consistent as I have been. So it's really about just putting, putting that work in and I feel you put that work in and I mean, everything else goes show and take care of itself out there on the field. So, I mean, I don't really focus. You, I try to use that pressure and stuff like that, and and embrace it, and I enjoy it because I want to be great. But once you put that work in, everything else handle handle itself out there on the field. Just have fun. I love that. It kind of speaks to that that uh, the the um quote of like, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. And even when you've been great, you're still constantly working on yourself, figuring out the different ways to be great. So really, the pressure is just the outside noise, but you know internally what you're trying to do and working with yourself to get that done. So I, I love that. That definitely is a way to like keep it locked in. And it, and it reflects on the field too. So it makes all the sense in the world. No doubt. Now, um, this is Community Voices. So we're continuing to give back and make sure that we have a community impact. And we'll be doing that with you as well, donating 8K to Make Them Know Your Name Foundation. Um, I would love Appreciate to- Of course, absolutely. Uh, I, I said it before and I'll say it again. I think it's extremely important. It's- there's so much work that foundations do that we don't see the impact they have. Sometimes it's not even in the moment. Sometimes it's when that kid goes home or when they're, when they're having that conversation or when they're, it, it, it's those things that they take with them. The things that, you know, we don't always see when they're at the camps or having it at the events, those things that make that long lasting impact that gives that kid a brighter, a brighter outlook on their future and, and a better impact and how it affects their family, friends and things like that. So Foundations like this are always extremely important because the work is everlasting and, and it's a foundation to keep them going and keep their futures bright. So just want to one once again say that here. Um, I would love to know what kind of made you in your own in your own words and in your own kind of reasoning, what made you start that foundation and how does it feel to be on a stage where you can have such an impact? Um on what, what you, you said what made me what? I'm sorry, what what kind of what made you start the charity? And also, like, how does it feel to have this impact in the community at this level? Mm -hmm. So my dad passed away in 2016 from cardiac arrest. He had a heart attack. And so in 2019, I believe it was, we started the Make Them Know Your Name Foundation. And that Make Them Know Your Name, that was a saying that my dad used to always say all the time. So that's how we got the, the name for the foundation. But it's a heart health foundation. And um, we just... Uh, try to spread a heart health awareness around the community and around the world and uh, putting CPR and AED kits into schools and workout facilities and around the community and uh, just trying to do things uh, to help prevent fatalities and um, circumstances like happened to what my family and I had to endure happening in other people's lives. So just trying to spread that awareness and uh, doing it in fun ways around the community. That is so so important, like the like health, especially within the black community as well, just health, taking care of yourself, knowing your body, watching your body, what you put in it, just all the ways to take care of your body. That stuff is so, is so, so pivotal. So I love the fact that you found a way, even in a moment like that, to continue that, like, give back. Like, how can I still, you know, have an impact in a ways that, you know, that are kind of close and personal to me, but will still impact other people so they, you know, they can have that same knowledge and information and health and those kind of things. So I, I love that you were able to do that. And I love the name. That is like, that's super special. Like make them know your name. Like that's, that's, I love that name. That's, that's Appreciate super fire. And it's just a great way to continue carry on the legacy too. So I love that. I love that. Okay. Now I want to, I want to ask too, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong here. I try to make sure I have my facts straight, but I'm also not, you know, I'm going to make sure I'm humble and if I'm wrong. Uh, when you were younger, I think around six or seven, I had read, we had read, I think it was Player Tribune report that like your, I think somebody, I think your father had taken to like a shelter on Thanksgiving and you kind of got yeah. to just like see um, just how how things can be from, from some of our unhoused neighbors or people who don't, necessarily have some of the resources and things like that that we do at a very early age which to me is so admirable but also so impactful like you, you know being so young kind of not understanding even grasping the the situation but knowing that 
people need something and having your heart really feel for people at such a young age, to me, it's a very impactful moment. And I think a very valuable thing to have your child be exposed to and be a part of at an early age. Um, what are some things that this organization has done that kind of has stuck with you similar to moments like that, would you say? Um, so for us, so I say um, we just had um, our annual uh, football camp and we have all the kids and everyone come out and obviously they're going to play football and enjoy themselves and run around and, and do drills and teach them. But before all of that, um, we bring out uh, medical personnel to teach these kids how to use CPR and AED kits. So um, I feel like that's one of the ways that we try to impact and teach and, and spread that awareness before we get into playing football and teaching these young kids and families that come out how to use uh, the CPR and AD kit, but in hopes that they never have to use it and, and go through that situation. But if, if so, if it does present them, present itself, then uh, they have that um, ability and knowledge to go out and uh, take action on whatever situation that it may be. Oh, I love it. That's, so, that's super important because I know, I mean, if I'm putting myself in, in, in those kids' shoes, it could, it could seem a little like a lot of responsibility because of, you know, how important it is, but like the scariness of the situation and being able to like gather your thoughts to be able to do those things. But like I said, to have the knowledge and hopefully you'll never have to use it, but in hopes to have that knowledge, mm -hmm. you know, it in a way it almost creates another sort of compassion and like a closeness and relationship with some of the players on the field, you know, knowing that if something happens, you can take care of your, your, your partners and your teammates in the field, or knowing that if you go home and you're with somebody who you may have to, instead of freaking out or, you know, not knowing what's going on, you'll have that skill, but Hey, I learned this from that camp. I'm, I'm, I'm checking in, I'm clocking in. I have that, I have that skill. So I love that it's teaching them something that is one super valuable where they can use it and like have a, stronger relationship with their teammates on, on the field, but at the same time, they can take that home and even use that with their family and just have that knowledge for the future, no matter where they're at. So I, I love that that skill, that, that knowledge, again, like we spoke to, is just so important. It's just so important. Now, I want to ask one more thing. I don't want to hold you up too long. Um, it, we're going into the 2024-2025 season, and I know it's July, but the season will kick off September right around the corner, August right around the corner. This thing will be here after we wake up. It'll be fast. But mm -hmm. what has your focus been this summer um, to really like have that maximum impact on the field? I know that you are, you know, it's it's not necessarily an individual game. It's, it's a team game. Um, mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, it is about, being the best you improving on areas where you where you've seen that you can improve and also just like all the things that you can do to just give the team a better chance what has been your focus this summer going into the season yeah so i mean once the season had ended uh, i think that was just a time for me to kind of decompress and uh take some vacations and get away a little bit and and get away from football but uh, now I'm at the point where I'm 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 keyed in probably like two I'm doing two a days right now working out training and uh, just working my craft my techniques lifting weights and uh, just preparing my body and my mind to uh, get ready for a full season and uh, be the best player that I can be out there on the field. I love that. I love that. Well, listen, man, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I I know these next couple months you're gonna be locked in in prime time, tip top shape. So I'm looking forward to it once again. Not only just wishing you the best of luck with this season, but again, a huge thank you for the work that you do in the community impact that you you have on the, on the community and using your platform in such a way to continue helping carry out our mission and carry out your mission as well. So thank you so much for even cutting out time to do this, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you, man. I appreciate you having me. Absolutely. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in to another episode of Community Voices. Until then, take care.